Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. If you guys watch Christina Randall, then you know why I said that, but that's her intro. I'm always like, I want a cute intro like Christina's. And then at the end, she's like, and if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, <laughs> y'all are my babies. <laughs> it literally gets stuck in my head though, which is the funniest thing about it, her intro, but she does true crime commentary. Sorry, I haven't used my phone to record in a while and I just woke up, so we're all over the place, but I'm feeling kind of tired, so I think I'm gonna get a coffee even though I slept for 10 hours. So let's go get a coffee. Don't mind the random canvas. <laughs> I have a painting that I'm doing for a friend, but let's get our coffee. y'all we're a few sips into this coffee so i have a little bit of pep in me now i'm not really a morning person and that's one thing i'm trying to we have to hold for her to scratch her post one second thank you sweet <laughs> one of my goals this year is to become more of a morning person but i don't know man i let me know what you guys think in the comments can you just become a morning person like i've been praying on it because if you could stop that, please. <laughs> Thank you. She loves the morning time. The morning time is her absolute favorite time of day. She's always excited to get up for the day, always excited to go look at the birds in the window, and I wanna be more like my cat, man. I'm serious. Today I'm off work. It's Wednesday, February 8th, which is also my nephew's first birthday, and I sent him a little christian book which i think you guys will like and i'll link it below it's called what is a little boy worth it's the cutest little book ever they also have a female version too what is a little girl worth and like i said i think you guys will like it so i'll link it below but but yeah so i gotta talk to him and then i'm gonna call my mom but first i'm gonna do my devotional for the day i got this book recently it's called sure as the sunrise and I'll show you my table right here. It's literally all Christian stuff. It's actually hilarious to me. <laughs> this is my Christian coffee table. <laughs> and this is from my Bible study group. We're doing 2 Samuel. And then this book, Her True Worth is really good. It, all, it would also be a really good gift for like a teenage girl because um, it's all about finding your worth in Christ and not through like social media or through other people. It's just a really good read. And it's also a good read if you're not in your teens, but I wish I would have had something like that when I was young. So let's go ahead and do our devotional. So today's says, time to check in with yourself. The Lord your God is with you, the mighty warrior who saves. He will take great delight in you. Zephaniah 317 in the NIV version, in the bottom asks us, how can you realign with your intentions for this month? Offer your intentions to God through prayer today. And there's also a little reflection for the end of the week, each week. We made it, friend, one week together, searching for God's mercy and delight, inviting him to step into our mornings and guide our days. Use this page to reflect on the week and check in with yourself. Perhaps you have more ideas for your kitchen edit you'd like to jot, or maybe you need simply to be still and reflect on God and share what's on your heart. I invite you to pause, reflect, and rest. So I started obviously early. I didn't start on a Monday, but it's okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter what day or week it is. It's, all that matters is that we're devoting our morning to, to the Lord and starting out with an awesome devotional to think about Him and reflect and pray. And that's been part of my morning routine lately. And if you haven't called your mom today, call your mama. 
So I'm gonna call her and finish my coffee. I usually end up talking to her for uh, like over an hour, it's just how it is. We're really close, so call your mommy and then we'll have breakfast together. So I just got this little Turkish pot to make eggs in. It's so small, like compared to my hand. <laughs> so I could probably only do like two eggs, one or two eggs in there, but it's so cute. So we're gonna make eggs in avocado. And I know Turkey just had that earthquake, so prayers to Turkey. But I've been super interested in Turkish culture lately. And this is one of the things that they use is a hammered copper pot to make their eggs. It's, I think it's called menemen. Uh, it's like tomatoes, peppers, and eggs. A lot of different cultures have a type of recipe similar. Um, but this one, I'm just gonna make regular eggs. And I do watch a Turkish woman on YouTube. And one of the ways she makes her eggs is with olive oil, paprika, and red pepper flakes. And it's honestly so good, guys. I totally recommend it. So that's what we're gonna do. It's so cute and aesthetic if you have company over, but yeah, this this is super hot, so you have to be careful with that. But also, I overcooked the eggs by accident. My bad. <laughs> Sometimes it happens. But look how pretty. Right, y'all, this is my bike fit. I get most of my workout stuff from Target, and obviously I like olive green, <laughs> even down to the hat. But yeah, so we're gonna go for a bike ride. I'm gonna take you with me, but first we're gonna grab a coffee, coffee number two. Two is my max, guys, or otherwise I feel like crap if I have more than two, but we're gonna go to a little coffee shop that's my favorite first, grab a coffee, and then we're gonna have ourselves a little bike ride day. So I ended up getting the rose latte that was on the menu and it's so good, so rosy and a little too sweet, but I, I don't mind that sometimes, but yeah, it was so good. And as I was getting ready to leave, I was trying to get my bike in the car, as you can see, look at it. And it, I just had this feeling of like, man, this it's times like these that I get tired of being single. And then I was like, I'm good, you know, like I did it myself. I was able to do it, but it also got me thinking just about my single season in general. And I was not planning on talking about this. Let's talk about it. So, cause it's on my mind, but my single season has been about six or seven years. I honestly lost count at this point. And it definitely gets old sometimes just as far as like people's questions or feeling like, I know a lot of single people feel this way, but feeling like, is there something wrong with me? Or why, why does it never seem to work out for me? And honestly, when I look back at my single period of time, which I have the weirdest feeling that it's kind of coming to an end. It's just, it's just a feeling I have. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But when I look back at all of the people that I went on dates with in my single period. I never dated anybody seriously or was in a relationship, but I would go on dates here and there. But none of them were right for me, guys. Like looking back, it's just none of, we weren't equally yoked and I was lost at the time and I was attracting people that were also kind of lost at the time. So it makes sense looking back. And when you look back at your life, I can guarantee that it will make sense one day. And there was really only one person that I felt truly compatible with in really where everything felt like it was there but we were both kind of lost at that time we we were believers but neither of us were saved and i don't know if he is now or not but we kind of, we lost touch but sometimes i think about that too and i'm like why god like why did why did we have to go our separate ways like i think that one could have worked but god's timing is always perfect when you look at the bible i mean he's never too late or too soon so he always has a plan. So if you're feeling down because you're single and you're tired of being single, like there's days like that, of course, but just know that God's plan is so perfect and God's plan is better than anything we could have imagined for ourselves. Like your God ordained spouse is gonna be God's best. It's not gonna be good. It's gonna be incredible. Just, yeah, so I'm kind of like giving myself a pep talk, but giving you one as well if you're single and you're tired of people asking you why you're single and all that. And 
Okay, so I got interrupted because my alarm went off on my phone and I set an alarm every day to pray for my future husband. So it's just funny that it went off in the middle of this video and <laughs> messed up my video, but I think it's actually perfect because if you guys are single or even if you're not, I feel like we need to be praying for that person every single day. You know, that person in the future is going to be a, par a huge part of your life. So you might as well start praying for them now. Pray for their salvation. Pray for their hearts to soften. Pray for them to be become the person that they need to be for you in your relationship and for God. And a lot of times when I pray for this person, I, I pray that he loves God more than he loves me because then I know that he'll be able to lead a household through God's guidance. So that's important for me. So it just interrupted me again because I snoozed it. Oh my goodness. I need to pray for this man apparently. <laughs> so, But anyway, before I do that, I want to talk about what dating was like before I was saved and what I'm feeling now because I haven't dated um, since I've been saved just because it's been such a transition for me and and I'm just kind of figuring things out. But when I would date before, it was always from a place of lack. So I wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit and I had a hole in my heart, a hole where Jesus is supposed to be. And so when I would date, it would be from a place of more like desperation, like you're gonna make me feel better type of thing. And I feel like that's a lot of people. A lot of people date that way and aren't necessarily whole within themselves before they date. And then they wonder why it ends up in disaster. And if I would have ended up with any of the people from my past, aside from that one, I said, um, I think it would have been a disaster. But even that one, I don't think it would have worked because my heart wasn't filled with Jesus yet. And I, I would have been codependent again. So God's timing's perfect. He doesn't want you to be with someone that isn't filled with the Holy Spirit or isn't yoked with you you know like if you're a christian and you're in god's number one for you then you need to find somebody who also makes god number one because i i know there are some people where it probably does maybe it does work if you're not equally yoked but i feel like that's maybe one of the number one reasons why people end up divorced is not being equally yoked in when it comes to religion and stuff like that so that's important for me and you know it's normal to desire a spouse guys i feel like our society makes you think that there's something wrong with you for wanting to be a wife or a husband and like you're desperate or you're a pick me if you desire a spouse and that's so weird to me society is always the opposite of god's plan is what i'm seeing now the opposite of what God wants for us. God wants us to find a spouse. He wants us to get married and have a family and he wants to be a part of it, guys. And whenever you're not making God number one, it's very hard to date because you need his guidance when you're choosing a spouse. Like it's a big deal. So yeah, those are just some thoughts on singleness and, you know, dating when you're filled with the Holy Spirit though, even though I haven't yet I just feel like I don't need anybody now. I'm good, you know, I'm happy, I'm content. I'm the happiest I've ever been in my life. And and at this point, it's a feeling of, I just wanna share that with someone because my love and happiness is just overflowing for the first time. So I'm like, I can't wait to share that love with somebody, you know, and that's a very different way of dating than from a place of lack like I was doing before. So I hope that helps somebody, you know, it's remember, it's normal to want a spouse it's totally normal to desire that, y'all. It's totally normal. But it's just up to God and his timing. And just trust that. And no matter what anybody says, focus on him. And I was asking him for clarification yesterday, actually, on singleness and where I'm at right now. He said 1 Corinthians 2, 5. And it was basically saying, don't listen to everybody else. Just focus on me when it comes to your spouse. Just focus on me, is what he was saying. Stop paying attention to the world. Stop paying attention to people's opinions just listen to me. So I hope that helps somebody. Anyway, let's go on our little bike ride.